if you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. The next question naturally is, what should I do about it? There's a lot of information out there about treatment options that can be a bit overwhelming to understand, especially if you're not in the field. You're already dealing with a diagnosis, and now, because we have access to so much information, you can be easily overwhelmed through searching or reading about all the different tr treatment options that are available and whether they suit you and your type of cancer. I would say that the first thing to understand once you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer is to understand a little bit more about the biology of the cancer. There's two real criteria that are important in the evaluation of any patient with prostate cancer. The first is the grade, which is referring to how fast the cancer is growing, and the stage, which is referring to where the cancer is distributed in the body. The grade for prostate cancer is often referred to as the Gleason score. It's really two numbers that are either three, four, or five. You take the first number and you add it to the second number and you'll derive a Gleason score, which ranges from six to 10. Essentially, what that Gleason score tells you is how fast the prostate cancer is growing. Gleason scores of six ordinarily are types of cancer that we can watch. Gleason scores of eight and higher are referred to as high-risk prostate cancers, and those require a little bit more timely treatment and oftentimes a bit more aggressive treatment strategies. The Gleason score sevens, which are squeezed between the sixes and the eights or higher, there's a little bit of variability in how you can pursue it. And treatment options really depend on what your overall health is, your age, and also what your preferences are. Prostate cancers grow relatively slowly. And so you have time to really understand the details about the prostate cancer biology so that you make decisions for treatment that are best for you. So again, the first thing we like to understand is the Gleason score or how fast the cancer is growing. The second component to a prostate cancer diagnosis that we have to understand is where it is distributed in our body. Essentially, it comes down to, is the prostate cancer confined to the rind of the prostate? Is it confined to the shell that surrounds the prostate capsule or the prostate tissue? Or is that cancer breaching that envelope of the prostate into the surrounding soft tissue around the prostate, such as the fat around the prostate, the nerves on the sides of the prostate that control sexual function, the sphincter in the front of the prostate that controls our urinary control? Or is that prostate cancer a little bit more disseminated? meaning it's moved into lymph nodes within the pelvis, lymph nodes outside of the pelvis, bone, or organs. So it really comes down to understanding whether the prostate cancer, from a stage perspective, is localized to the envelope of the prostate, if it's breached the envelope of the prostate into the surrounding soft tissue, but not quite into lymph nodes, bone, or organs, or if it's moved outside of that fatty tissue into more distant sites such as lymph nodes, bone, or organs. These two criteria, grade and stage, will ultimately help us decide what best treatment option would serve you. To best understand the stage of the prostate cancer, we have to often perform imaging studies such as MRI of the prostate, a CT scan of the prostate, special PET scans of the prostate, often referred to as the PSMA PET scan or a PET choline scan. And we can also perform bone scans. So these studies will allow us to understand where the distribution of the cancer is. And in tandem with the Gleason score, we make a decision for how best to treat you from not only a cancer standpoint, but also a functional preservation standpoint. Once you have an understanding of the score and the grade, now comes the treatment options. So in individuals who have clinically localized prostate cancer, meaning prostate cancer that is confined to the rind of the prostate or the envelope or capsule of the prostate, there are those individuals, I would say, have the most treatment options available to them. And it really depends on the grade. So if again, the stage is confined to the envelope of the prostate, we determine a lot of our treatment strategies based on the grade. This is a very crude way of looking at it, but generally patients who have a Gleason 6 prostate cancer, which is the slowest growing form of prostate cancer, can be managed with active surveillance or active monitoring. That doesn't mean we just diagnose an adios, but we actually diagnose these patients and then follow them longitudinally 
with repeat MRIs to make sure that it's still confined to the prostate, repeat PSA blood tests to make sure that the PSA is not rising in a concerning fashion, which would indicate increasing burden of disease, and with repeat biopsies to make sure that it's staying a Gleason 6. For patients who have clinically localized prostate cancer, meaning that which is confined again to the capsule of the prostate, but is a higher grade, so grades eight, nine, potentially even a 10, we have to be a bit more aggressive in our treatment strategies. And that often includes removal of the whole prostate with surgery or radiation and hormone therapy to the prostate, or rather radiation to the prostate and hormone therapy while you're receiving the radiation therapy. For these higher grade cancers, even though they're localized to the prostate, they may require multiple modalities of treatment. So it may not be just a one-stop shop form of treatment. It may require a combination of surgery and radiation and hormones. Patients who have Gleason 7 prostate cancer, so between the sixes or the low uh, grade prostate cancers and the eight and higher's, which are the high grade cancers, can be treated also with a multitude of treatment options. In some elderly individuals who have a lot of other health conditions going on, we must take into context that the Gleason 7 prostate cancers evolve very slowly. And as a result of that, some urologists and some patients may elect to monitor these patients closely, <clears throat> waiting for them to become a bit more aggressive before they pull the trigger for treatment. In younger individuals who are very healthy, given the potential for Gleason 7 to eventually exit out of the envelope of the prostate, you may pursue upfront treatment in the form of surgery or radiation. We're at an exciting time in the management of prostate cancer because there's a lot of novel treatment options that are developing called focal therapies or ablative therapies that can treat only parts of the prostate and not the entire prostate. The idea being by treating only a part of the prostate and not the entire prostate, you preserve functional aspects of a patient's life, including urinary control and sexual function. So as you can see, when it comes to treating prostate cancer, there's a multitude of factors that we as urologists and patients also must understand. We have to understand the biology of the cancer, specifically the grade, how fast it's growing. Where is the cancer or the stage of the cancer, which is often based on imaging modalities such as MRI, PET scan, CT scan, bone scan. But we also have to factor in the patient's age. Because prostate cancer grows and evolves relatively slowly compared to other cancers, we have to understand that competing health risks a patient may have, or rather the age of the patient, may influence whether the cancer is actually even going to be impactful during their lifespan, or if they're going to be impacted more significantly by another health condition. We have to also account for other health conditions the patient may be affected by that can impact their longevity. So it really isn't just a, a, a unidimensional decision. It requires understanding uh, a constellation of factors, the biology of the cancer, the patient-specific risk factors, before we can make a treatment option that best serves the patient from a cancer perspective, but also maintains their quality of life. My name is Paris Shaw. I'm a urologic oncologist at the Mayo Clinic. I'm Derek Lomas, a urologist at Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic on Prostate Health offers patients clarity on issues dealing with the prostate. It'll walk you through topics ranging from prostate health, screening for cancer, enlargement, inflammation, and really covers all things related to the prostate. It can be a one-stop resource for you. So this is a resource to help provide clarity, not only for patients, but also their families as they navigate their journey dealing with prostate issues.